Hey, what's up guys? I'm the Davidic One and welcome back to another video here on the channel. If you're new here, we do lots of cool art videos and challenges and tutorials. So if this sounds like something that you'd be into, make sure that you hit the subscribe button down below. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys my recording setup for making art videos. I also recently got a MacBook for editing videos and a microphone for recording voiceovers and intros. So I'll also be reviewing those from an artist's perspective to see if you as an artist should get those for your setup. Without further ado, let's get right into this video. Hope you guys enjoy. So in the box we have the MacBook itself, we have a charging cord, a little packet with some stickers that we don't need, and a charging brick. And that's everything that comes in the box. So it's been about 4 months since I got my MacBook. I got the M1 MacBook Air with 16GB of RAM, 8-core GPU, 8-core CPU, and a terabyte of storage. For all you non-tech geniuses out there, it's basically a stacked out beast of a MacBook Air. I decided to go for the Air over the Pro because I couldn't really find the value in paying an extra $200 for pretty much just an internal fan that can be loud and annoying and a touch bar instead of function keys. Since the time I bought my MacBook, I've used it for editing, watching videos, and schoolwork. When I first got it, I bought the Pro Apps Bundle for Education with a student discount, which is definitely the best offer you can get if you're planning on buying the apps in it anyways. Final Cut Pro itself is $400 and the entire bundle is only $260. I did some research on editing software before I bought Final Cut Pro and the two biggest other contenders I found were DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Premiere Pro. I didn't want to get the Adobe software because it requires a monthly subscription and subscriptions add up, especially when it's $25 a month. So it was between DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro, and I decided to go for Final Cut Pro because it's an Apple product, so it works best with Mac. If you're just starting off and you're looking for editing software, just be warned that Final Cut Pro is a pain in the butt to learn, and it's very confusing. It took me quite a while to get. So I would recommend using the free version of DaVinci Resolve. It has fewer features, but I heard it's pretty good. And then you don't have to pay the money starving artist life, you know what I'm saying? My MacBook Air works good with editing. Sometimes it can be really slow though if I'm trying to speed up hours of footage and edit it all at the same time. So what I usually do is I speed up all the footage in one project and then edit it afterwards in another project. Also, sometimes Final Cut Pro randomly starts taking up hundreds of gigabytes of storage, and this is because it stores all these random library files. I don't really understand all the technicalities of it, but to fix it, you go to File at the top of your screen, then you click Delete Generated Library Files, then check all the boxes, and boom, you've reduced your file size by hundreds of gigabytes. I'm starting to get used to editing on a Mac with Final Cut Pro, and it's starting to become a lot easier and faster than when I I started. That being said, I can definitely recommend the M1 MacBook Air for artists and YouTubers alike. Wow, this is a long ramble. On to the next unboxing. This is what the audio quality of the Blue Yeti X microphone sounds like. And this is what the audio quality of my iPhone 11 microphone sounds like. Blue Yeti X, iPhone 11. I'm no audio genius, but from what I can tell, the Blue Yeti X has really great audio quality. It has four different modes that you can use. Bi-directional if you're doing interviews, cardioid for most of your voiceover stuff, omnidirectional if you're doing a room tour or something, and stereo mode which picks up audio from the right or left so it'll sound like you're inside of the person's ear on the left or right side. So people use that for ASMR and stuff. One thing I like about the Blue Yeti X is that it has these little lights in the front that tell you when your audio is peaking so it'll get distorted so then you can just turn down the gain and it's all good. But yes, the Blue Yeti X might not be the best microphone in the world. There's definitely more expensive, better options. 
but for my purposes, doing voiceovers and art videos, it's a pretty phenomenal choice. And for $200, it's a real steal. I can definitely recommend the Blue Yeti X. This is what my sound studio looks like when I'm actually working in it. I make the mattresses into a little box so I have really good audio quality. Very nice, Gypsy. How much is it for you? All right, it's time to give you guys the tour of my setup. So, here is my desk. And we have my new MacBook with this video editing currently. We have my microphone here, picking up audio for this clip right now. <laughs> This here is a microphone stand, so my microphone can clip onto this thing. And this is a pop filter for better audio quality so you don't hear some of the p and s sounds when I'm recording voiceovers. Here we have a light which is nice and long, so the lighting's more even over my entire drawing. And then also if I'm working at night, I can switch the modes. And then obviously I can change the brightness, which is nice as well. So then next over here, we have this, which is attached to this dresser. And this is my camera stand for my phone right here. So it can clip in like so, and I can record my drawing videos. The stand can also swivel like this, and I can stick my camera in here so I can record my intros. Here, I can also set up my GoPro if I want to record myself drawing, maybe in a time lapse, so you'll just see me quickly going. Might use that for future videos, that might look pretty cool. Over down here in this little drawer, we have my drawing tablet, my drawing tablet pen, and the glove that goes so I can draw without my hand touching it. Over in this drawer, we have my Copic markers, some fine liners, some Posca markers, some pencils and white gel pens and erasers and stuff. And then in this drawer, we have some different drawing books. We have the sealant that I use when I do painting videos. And then we have just a cord for my drawing tablet and a lavalier mic. Next, over here, you can see we have my green screen set up. So now it's behind my chair, so I can just record my intros here. Here's the green screen. And kind of an interesting story, since I don't have a roommate, I'm actually covering up the closet that would have been my roommate's. I just keep it for some storage of my suitcase, some shelves, and random boxes. But yeah, that's covered up by the green screen. And then where my roommate's bed would have been is now my little recording space for voiceover. So when I'm in here, I'll be able to have better audio quality and less echo. So for voiceovers, that'll be very nice. And yeah, that's pretty much my entire YouTube setup currently. My desk used to be over here on this wall, but I moved it and put this desk here. So now I'm just gonna work on schoolwork stuff over here, and I'm gonna work on YouTube stuff over here. Since I'm already showing you guys around, I might as well make this a full room tour. So over here, I have a mini fridge and a microwave. I keep my guitar over here. And this is my bed. I have a memory foam mattress and a weighted blanket in there. And over here is my sink and my mirror. And I have a shared bathroom with a room next door. And then we have my closet. And I actually hang up my shirts now. And I keep some shoes and random clothes and hats and stuff. And then I have another mirror over here. I can see my entire self, which is pretty cool. So yes, this is my recording setup. <clears throat> hey. hey, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you won't miss out on any of my upcoming uploads. Also, make sure that you hit the like button so that the YouTube algorithm will recommend my video to more people. Until next time, I'm the Davidic One. Stay safe. Pshh.